Hello everyone and welcome back to Nikki Plays with Nikki Batgirl D'Angelo and today we're back in Rebel Galaxy Outlaw. So having just spoken with Richter and getting his uh, bullshit answer to where the package is, we have to go out and help him get codes that are going to help us steal the package from his own family. Does something just not sound right to you? No, you should have known by the title of the game that you were going to become an outlaw somehow. But here you are being forced into this life of crime because of your situation. Essentially your husband being shot or killed or maimed or dismembered, whatever it was, and now some cyborg looking dude with lots of rings named Jules that's, well, naming named Ruth that's coming after you. So my biggest suggestion to you in the game is to make sure that whenever you go on these missions that you always, always, always pick up some side missions because you don't actually get paid for the initial missions that you're going to do in this game. Now here we are having a little bit of fun clearing up some mines and you can see over on the right hand side of the screen that that is ticking down. The biggest problem I have with this is that the quirkiness and the jerkiness of the controls, but I find out very quickly that those can be changed. So I kill the mines over here and obviously I gotta go off and then do some other fun things. I have a couple of missions for delivery, a couple of missions for scouting and a couple of missions for clearing up these mines. Well, you can only take four missions at any point, which is kind of my point in trying to make it sound like I have a lot because I don't. Four missions plus your primary storyline. I, I guess that's to try to keep you from making too much money to beat the game too early. Nonetheless, let's move on to something I figured out because I think I could help you all with this game. So in the game, hitting the E key kind of brings you into a world of yesterday. You see how that's called an Amigo? It was actually an Amiga tablet kind of thing like this, handheld, that somebody had prototyped. And it is an amazing look into that. You could look it up on YouTube, you could look it up on Google and you'll find something. But this is your system settings, so it's kind of like the Amiga OS from years gone by. And what I find is going to be the mouse control style, the um, mouse resolution, the mouse sensitivity, all that stuff right here. And all I can tell you is that this helps a bunch in being able to curl, control the ship correctly. So if you could come over here, you know, the first thing I did was I, I swapped the pitch angle. I mean, when you were pushing forward, you were going up. When you were pulling back, you were going down. And although that sounds like it would be intuitive to people, it's not the way that you fly. You push forward to go down, you pull back to go up. And that's just the way that your brain works if you're a pilot. All right, look at these wonderfully rendered, wonderfully detailed space stations. I know that they're cartoonish, I know that they're unrealistic, but this is the type of game it is. I really like the throwback graphics, the retro graphics. I mean, look at it. This could be a scene right out of Wing Commander if it ever got re-digitized, re-imagined. Look at that in the background. Doesn't, can you just hear that music from the original Wing Commander and, and the Earth going up, the fireworks, the Origin, uh, the Origin logo, everything just coming out at you. So that quick stop was just to drop off some uh, cargo that we had. We made some extra money over there. And now we're going to move on to the mission with Richter. And I'm going to be quiet for this mission because... Well, mainly because you got to hear it for yourself. I know I said it was going to be quiet, but I think I'm going to add a little bit of something in here every now and then because you just have to. 
I mean, this mission drove me insane because you're supposed to trust this guy and he's the least trusting person out there. And you're being brought out into the deep where you're going to be, well, the deep black, where you really just have to acknowledge that your life is in this man's hands. So we stop off to kill a few pirates and I'm getting better at this. And I think I'm getting better at this because I'm still in the Texas system. I think I'm getting better at this because I have my platypus geared up a little bit better than stock. Just wait until you leave the Texas system. <laughs> There's a new level of geared up that's going to be introduced to you. There's also a new level of um, pucker factor that's going to be given to you when you leave the Texas system. You really want to have a new ship, a better ship, by the time you leave the Texas system, or at least have a lot of upgrades. And you will see that I will put a ton of upgrades on this ship because I, you know, I have this nostalgia look on uh, the game. I remember when I played Privateer, I had my Taurus so decked out that in the early stages of Privateer, it was badass. But it didn't last when I got into a fight a little bit further out from where you start. Man, I can't remember that game worth beans right now. I gotta go back and play it. I know that they have it on good old games. Maybe it's something that I will uh, bring into the channel at some point. But here we are. He's such a jerk. <laughs> These laser turrets are nothing, but then something else happens. What a jerk. I swear. It's easy for you to say. You know, I'm trying to live a nice upstanding life and here I am having to destroy other people's property. I mean killing pirates, picking up uh, loose non stolen um cargo that falls under the salvage act i can understand that but having to blow up other people's property even if it is his family's so that's something different and then these poor innocent mercs that had to fly into i mean look at that he flew right into me and he's gone you know, going head-on with these these other ships is not good unless you get your uh, tier two um, tier two shields and you update the plastisteel armor to something better. But you know, thankfully the game. Oh wow, it it does. I am finding at this point that it does do a much better job at letting you fly. Of course, I tried my best at this point to do a uh, freelancer-style playthrough, but that, that lasted for like 10 seconds and it was over. I just think this game is better from inside the cockpit than outside the cockpit. More like Privateer was. Alright, and that was it. Now we get to go talk to Richter inside of nachos oh god i can't remember the name of this place i'll call it nacho grande <laughs> you now the automatic landing sequences still just make me go mm, i want to go back to those days when you didn't have to spend three hours trying to cross the galaxy like you do in Elite, but I love Elite. Elite is one of my favorite games. 
or 40 minutes entering the atmosphere and landing in star inside of Star Citizen, which it is not the case anymore. It's a lot quicker these days, but still. Gameplay. Gameplay is what sells games. You remember what I said was going to happen if I know there's a lot bad. of clicking around. Now, hang on, hang on. We got to agree on a definition of bad here. We got the codes, didn't we? I mean, in my book, that's a long way from bad. Until I'm clear of this mess, I think I'm going to reserve judgment. That's what I like to hear. Reason. The hard part is over. With these codes, that transfer is going to be easy. There's no slack in the rope. Now, for stage two, you're going to need a tractor system. I mean, I saw what you're flying. Is that going to be a problem? <sighs> I haven't had time to get one installed yet. Damn it. All right, I'll be back. I'll be around. Don't take too long, though. So we do all that work, and now we got to go and get ourselves a tractor beam. You know, we're spending money to do his work. He should be at least offering us and saying, you know, I got this really cheap tractor beam for you. It might be helpful on this one. You might want to go out and get a better one, but if you don't, at least this one's here. So here we are given the task of upgrading our ship again. So we have to go and do it, right? This is what we're here for. We're here to enjoy the space sim, to engage in combat, to complete our missions, to upgrade our ship. It's got the whole eternity of space games. But Richter could have just given it to us. Instead, I've got to fly around, I've got to kill pirates, I've got to clear minefields, I've got to deliver cargo. That's about the size of the missions so far. There's escort missions, kill pirates. There's mining missions, move cargo. There's cargo missions, move cargo. There's bounty hunter missions, kill pirates. There's a lot of different things that you can do, but it really comes down to those couple of things. And of course, there's always hitting asteroids, like I just did. The map really is a throwback to some of those old games also. Love it. A sector map. But still, we find ourselves here doing what we least like. Killing mines. I'm not going to bore you with this because honestly this could be done better. They put the mines very close together, which they should be. And they have them on this auto follow if you get within a certain range which they should be, but still, I feel like this mission is just tedious. Even though it's the easiest mission to do, and probably the quickest money you'll make. Now give me some pirates to kill, and then you've got me. These are some of my favorite missions, but you know, I, I get this bounty, right? I just made 3,000 credits for killing that one guy. And I, I have to say that it, it's like no more than a minute later that I'm jumped by all of his friends and, well, that $3,000, that 3,000 credits that I made might just be for naught. Wow, having to fly around here. Kind of fun. Whoa, oh, yeah. <laughs> there goes that three grand. <laughs> I scratched the paint and broke the glass. Anyway, this is what the fun part of the game is. It's actually getting down and dirty into the space combat. And I think later on I'm going to start doing my, uh, doing my videos for this channel for this particular playthrough live. But for the first three or four, I think it's going to be post-commentary because, well, I shot them all. And I forgot to turn my mic on. Sorry about that, folks. But still, I think you're getting a better idea of the beginning of the game this way. Because it is tedious in the beginning. You don't know what you're doing. You don't know where you're going. You don't know what effect you're going to have on things. And, you know, you just feel like... Uh, you just feel unfamiliar with everything. And then it all starts to congeal and come together. So as we get back here to Nacho Dolces, or Nacho Grande, um, we land, and the first thing that we have to do...
is going to be oh yes you know what it is components and then tractor beam 7500 credits we do have 21k so we could update a lot of things right now but 7500 credits and you know this is what I'm talking about we're going to help him steal something obviously he's getting something from Orzo we got the ship it's a pile of poop the ship that Orzo gave us but we got the ship Richter's got to be getting something and we're spending money we're, we're risking our life we're going into combat we're clearing mines. All right, I'm squared away, and I got a tractor installed. Can we get on with this? All right, then. This should be smooth sailing. Look, it's obvious you and your brother have a thing going on between you, and now his back is going to be up. What's to say he doesn't change the codes over? This is a big organization. My brother doesn't have time to mess with these sorts of minor inconveniences. He leaves that to the little people. And you don't think the little people would do the same thing? The Repeater serves a whole shipping fleet. And there's subcontractors and subcontractors of subcontractors who this stuff is distributed to. You can't just flip a switch and restructure all your shipping communications. Trust me, we've got time. Fine. So let's just get it over with then. All right then. So Again, the shipment we need to sidetrack is going to be headed for Lubbock out of Austin. I'm going to mark an intercept point for you, and we'll meet up there. I'll broadcast the codes and make sure things go smooth. All you have to do is watch out for any trouble and take delivery of the cargo. It's gonna be easy as pie. Yeah, we'll see. All right, I'll meet you out there. And you just remember whose ass is on the line. I wish you had conversation choices in these because I would be really pissed. I would be like hitting the button for it. You're an ass, you're a jerk, I don't believe you. Give me some more money. All right, so I'm gonna walk in here. I'm looking to join up to the I merchants. I think Can this is going dance? to be a good idea. So I'm gonna give this guy a grand of You've my money, right place, and I'm gonna start doing this merchants guild runs now. Guild. We won't talk about one that I had to run for this gentleman a little bit later. But what I'm gonna say is, you can join our it, it, for it only looked like credits. easy money. It looked like easy money, and well, I wish I captured that one on film for you because it was not easy. Of our job matching system Actually, right I think away. it was captured, sure and I can do a little short uh, montage of all the stuff I had to go through to uh, get that delivery delivered. All right, let's jump on to the actual battle for this one big part that uh, we're supposed to get for Orzo. Destination reached. So I find this to be perfect. You're asked to go meet somebody to do something kind of nefarious, right? You get there, and the person that asked you to meet you there isn't Bounty there. Detected. Kind of turns the tide there, making Craft it seem inbound. like that right, person was spot. meeting you. They ought to pass through here any minute. You just hang back while I broadcast the codes and work the old Richter charm, and then we can be on our way. You'll forgive me if I'm a little pessimistic. Craft yeah, he wants plausible deniability. <laughs> Um, you'll hey, hear him say that a couple times. Work. Unidentified craft, this is Brust Arms Hauler T78 right, so this en route is to Lubbock. Please maintain a safe some distance. Some of the interesting things that I find T78, about this. So good to see you. We know this how much Richter this Brust. game Looks like we have a is like included in your privateer and freelancer. And I'm here to correct the error. Ah, uh, Mr. Brust. Uh, sir, is there any auth code for this transfer? We don't have any record of it. Broadcasting now. The package identifier is, let's see, MKJ-47. Everything should be in order. But it's also like Star Wars. If you look uh, at this freighter, while we verify that code. it's right out of the X-Wing TIE Fighter, X-Wing vs. TIE Fighter, and X-Wing Alliance series. I got a bad feeling about this. Mr. Bruss, we've got a negative response on that in my opinion, and an addendum that reads, she's Under got no kind circumstances of a are you to grant any requests made by Solo Richter Brusk. Why, that son of a... Is that from my damn brother? Listen, this is just a miscommunication. I've got the codes. I repeat, the auth code is denied. Mr. Bruss, please give way and let us pass on by. Well, what now, genius? 
We're only gonna get one shot at this. Listen, I hate to say this, but you're gonna have to scare it out of him. What? This is your party. You do it. I love Last flying down the center of those things. Head. I remember when I we used to have to disable them. I had my ion cannons and Look, I disable them and try to take their cargo. Oh, this is my family. It was a long company. time ago, I can't but be they look just like it. Freighters. Richter is a joke. You son of a bitch. Uh, I should have let Orzu keep his damn ship. Listen, T-78, I don't want to have to do this. I need you to eject that requested package and move along. I can't let I'm you leave without thinking, it. If I just take out its engines, Negative won't that craft. be enough? Be advised we are contacting combat support. Aggression against this vessel will be met with force. Damn, that means mercenaries. You're gonna have to get a move on. Well, shit. T-78, I said in again, these mercs. eject that package. Neither of us right. wants this to go any or further. He says he's calling them in, so I start looking around for them, and they're not there. And then they show up a few seconds later, firing at me. I, I don't think he hires the right people. We did upgrade the uh, radar to the Ranger. It doesn't allow us to lock on our missiles, which I'm okay with. We did buy missiles, by the way. But it does allow me to distinguish between who the good guys are and who the bad guys are. Unfortunately, in this situation, I, I think the other ship should be blue and I should be red, <laughs> because I think we might be the bad guys here. I mean, we're, we're killing innocent mercenaries because this guy wants to steal stuff from his family. Alright, we got that. And I think there's four, four of these guys that we have to kill. Yep. Thank God for gimbaled weapons or I wouldn't hit anything. You know? In real life, you got gimbaled weapons too. I think the MiG-29 was one of the first uh, aircraft with not a gimbaled weapon, but an auto cannon. So it only fired when your firing solution was such that you would have a hit on the target. So the pilot would hold the trigger and then when he had the uh, sights right in the right place, the gun would automatically fire. I think that's cool. Up. Oh. Without lock-on, that will comply. missile is just going to go on forever. We got heat seekers, on, which now. doesn't make Scoop sense to me because the, the heat-seeking missiles don't really require anything in the aircraft to lock it on. You're just being shown what the missile is locking on to when you have a heat-seeking missile. So that was kind of uh, bad. So after that, we uh, are drop the cargo. They just drop it. And all we have to do now is just fly in, blow up the cargo pallets, which evidently are the things that hook to the side of the ship, which is pretty cool. We gotta be within four and a half uh, kilometers. That's what we need, I think. I think that's what we need. It's orange, so I would imagine that was it. it. And I think that's the end the of this mission. This thing? And then all we have to do is go back and uh, all right. stomach we'll another uh, conversation with Richter. Fly quiet like. Asshole. Objective complete. And mission complete. We got it. Let's go home. Destination reached. And there we are. Not so dull, Jess. And we'll go talk to Richter and uh, find out something really cool. I think it's going to be up. Oh, I decide I want to go do some missions, which is probably stupid. So I'll meet you back at Nacho Dolges. So evidently, after that mission with Richter, I decided to go do another 20 minutes in Document that clip and another 40 minutes in the next clip to go make some extra money. And then I come back here to talk to Richter. But also, most likely because I wanted to make the money to upgrade a couple of components. I upgraded my radar, as I told you. I upgraded my ECM. I upgraded my weapons, and I upgraded my jump drive. So I got all of those things done, so we could move on to the next part of the series. We're getting closer and closer to me doing 
live commentary. So these are all the things I picked up by killing those uh, pirates. And you'll very quickly see me make a lot of money. I should have bought a new ship. I really should have. I should have bought a Sandhawk or one of the other ones, but I decided I wanted to play this like my playthrough with uh, Privateer, the last one I had, and uh, I didn't put that one online, which was kind of crazy. But here we are looking at shield generators, ECM, weapons, radar, hmm, radar, power plant, cargo extender. Cargo extender would be actually a good fit for us right now. I think it would be important. Secret Stash, Cargo Extender 2, Smuggler's Hold, all that stuff. We do have our jump drive. We're good. And I'm going to look at the, that's the one that we need, the LS3i. That's the one that will allow lock-on and the identification friend or foe colors. It's going to be important to us. Very important to us. All right. Let's see what's going on now. I think I just got a little bit crazy over here trying to see how much it was going to cost. But I know we're going to end it with this conversation with Richter. And then I just got to talk about one of the cool things that comes out of that conversation. Alright, I know what you're going to say. But all's well, it ends well. Right. It's a real mystery that you aren't a CEO, Richter. A real mystery. That's what I've been saying. So, that package has taken up room in my cargo hold. Where am I dropping this off? Orzu's casino is in the Nevada system. Just skedaddle on over there, kick it out the back, and it's out of your hair. I wish I could say it's been a pleasure. Oh, come on now. You love my roguish charm. I gotta say, you're good in a scrap, and I'm not a bad guy to know. I know you're trying to fix up that hunk of junk. Tell you what, if I hear of anything you might be interested in, I'll let you know. There could be some credits in it. Uh-huh. See you around, Victor. This is one of the things I like about the game. You're going to be able to call friends in the future to come and assist you. And Richter isn't too bad in a scrap. He's not going to be the best one, of course, because he's your first one. But if you start to get into a fight where you feel like you're not going to make it, or you're about ready to get into a fight that you know that you can't do alone, you can call Richter to your aid, and it will make that fight a lot easier. I really like this feature in the game, and it is something that turned it around for me once I got here. All right, in the next episode, I am just going to give you a short and sweet play playing of the videos of meeting Orzu and Satchel, and then we are going to start live commentary. And that's because at that point, it really is about making money, upgrading your ship, and uh, getting on with the storyline. Some things that are good in this, in this um, game I've already talked about. I love the retro feel, I love a lot of the gameplay, I love the stylistic graphics, but one thing I don't like that Freelancer did great is you never got that call for your next mission until you reached a certain point, a certain level, a certain notoriety. Um, you, you had to have a certain level of ship equipment and then you would get that call. This game doesn't hold your hand. It'll tell you to go on your next mission. You'll fly out there and die repeatedly. So one thing I'm going to tell you is that there's going to be incremental updates that you're going to have to do. So why not just play the game for a bit and upgrade your ship? And that's what I get to. I just play the game for a while in between here and my next video. And I upgraded my ship. So we'll take it from there because at that point... We can't do anything after we meet Satchel, who you'll see in the next video, until we actually get a new ship. And that's going to be the whole essence of the next episode. If you like this video, please click the thumbs up button below. If you do subscribe, please click the notification icon so you get notified of all my future videos. 
And if you do want to help the channel grow a little bit better and you want to go and become one of that 1%, I do have a Discord where I talk to my patrons. And if you want to support me on Patreon, it is patreon.com forward slash Batgirl. And folks, thank you so much for watching, listening, and putting up with my absence. And with that said, you all be safe out there, and I'll talk to you soon. Bye.